The federal government's beginning work to overhaul Australia's industri industrial relations system with the Prime Minister labelling it not being fit for purpose. The Attorney-General Christian Porter, who's also the Minister for Industrial Relations, will be overseeing five working groups involving interested parties from business to unions. He joins me live from Perth. Minister, this government's been in power since 2013. Why does it only now strike you as a good idea to get employers and workers together to brainstorm ideas for workplace reform? I think only now has it become possible because both employers and unions and the government have faced a pandemic which has seen the loss of hundreds of thousands of jobs because of circumstances beyond our control. So for the first time in a very long time we've got a coalescence of interests in creating new jobs and saving existing jobs which didn't exist before. I guess, Lee, for 29 years we've enjoyed the fruits of a very prosperous economy. 29 years of uninterrupted economic growth and that caused an environment where there was a lot of competition for how you spread the rewards of that prosperity and now we face these incredible circumstances that we never thought we would face where in whole industry sectors that prosperity has been lost and we have to rebuild it and we have to do that fast. Is the plan that these working groups will come up with recommendations that will then be legislated? The task that I've been given is to have a product come out of every working group. Now, the product may in some instances be legislative, it may be budgetary, it may be a policy product, but whatever product there is, the purpose of the working groups is to try and garner as much agreement around that product as possible. Because, sorry now, to interrupt, in but some, I think the public would find mm, it really annoying if you go through this process, they come up with recommendations that there's consensus around and then the government goes, oh, no, 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 we're not going to be upping the superannuation guarantee or whatever it is that's controversial. Well, I mean, as you know, the five working groups aren't dealing with the superannuation guarantee. I mean, they're designed to deal with specific known problems in the system which all of the parties, I think, agree either inhibit job growth and job creation or are causing um, issues in the system that prevent jobs being saved and from that prosperity being rebuilt. So, of course, people will be frustrated if the level of agreement is not high. Uh, and, of course, we want there to be as much agreement as possible. Oh, I'm suggesting the where the frustration... Equally... Sorry to interrupt, we've got a little bit of a delay, so it's a bit awkward. But I'm suggesting where the frustration might come from is if there's actually consensus in the working groups, but then the government, for political reasons, doesn't want to adopt the recommendations, as we've seen happen many times before. Well, I think we're getting well ahead of the task of actually trying to build consensus, and that consensus, of course, has to be between employer groups uh, and unions, and the government has to see it as a consensus that is worth pursuing, whether it's in a budgetary policy sense or in Parliament. But, you know, there are known problems inside the system, how we define casuals, the enterprise agreement system being slow and cumbersome, uh, new major investment projects, not being able to have an enterprise agreement for the life of the project, uh, awards being incredibly complicated with multiple pay points, and everyone agrees that these things are a problem. Everyone agrees that these things are causing um, problems in terms of job growth, and in the present environment, job growth is the number one game in town. I mean, it's what every single side to this debate is focused on is how do you save jobs that are in jeopardy in distressed industries and how do you grow new ones? The vast majority of Australians aren't members of unions, only 14% of people are. In this process, shouldn't workers be represented by other voices that more likely speak for them? Well, we'll have five working groups and we'll sort of try and limit the composition of those to around 15 people, give or take, and they'll both represent employers, employee and union groups and of course we'll look in industry sectors and in work, working group issues for other ways in which workers can be represented where there isn't a high level of unionisation but what I'm trying to avoid is a sort of a massive Kevin Rudd 2020 summit style thing with thousands of people in the room talking at such high levels of generality about the vibe that nothing gets done like we want to try and focus minds on individual problems and come up with solutions to those problems that we can try and draw a relative amount of agreement around. But I'm open-minded and we're putting the composition together now. Would you envisage that there would likely be common ground for an increase in the minimum wage? 
Well, the, the working groups aren't considering the minimum wage. I mean, we, we've been very clear that the five working groups deal with five very specific issues. Now, the minimum wage is set, as you would realise, by the Fair Work Commission, not by these working groups, not by the government, but by an analysis by the Fair Work Commission, which all of the sort of groups that will be represented here have already put submissions into. What we're concerned about is known problems that are inhibiting the economy's ability and the government's ability to grow jobs, preserve jobs, save jobs, and create create the prosperity again that we've enjoyed for such a long but period of time. But nonetheless, some of these groups in the context of their discussions might look at things like, say, minimum wage or the superannuation guarantee that I mentioned before and think, well, they're actually stifling what we're trying to do in this narrow area. Well, I mean, conceivably, but I think one of the problems again in this space has been that people sent, tend to draw in every known social issue or problem or policy or shopping list of things that they want. And this has happened on both sides of the debate, unions and employers, both sides of politics. But what we do have here is a known set of problems that very likely inhibit our ability to grow jobs and grow prosperity. We now find ourselves in the greatest challenge Australia's ever faced out of wartime to grow jobs and regrow prosperity. So why would we not try and limit ourselves to solving known problems with potential solutions around which we can gather some agreement? The more Minister, we try and talk we, about, before we, the worse we will do. Before we run out of time, on another matter in your portfolio, the Federal Police today announced that it wouldn't charge newspaper journalist Annika Smithhurst. Potential charges remain against two ABC journalists. When would you anticipate a decision on that one way or the other and why the delay? Well, I, I would hope that you get a decision on the other matter as soon as possible. I mean, I've said before, I've been very frustrated at the length of time it's taken for this conclusion to be reached. But with respect to the matter that you're um, raising now, that was a complaint put in um, by the Secretary, I think, of Defence. That is an independent body, a person putting in a complaint to an independent organisation in the AFP who independently determine whether to investigate, whether to continue or drop the investigation. In this case, they've concluded and dropped the investigation. It seems to me that took rather a long period of time, but quite properly that's not something that any minister has any control over. But my expectation would be that these things are resolved in a reasonable time, and I think reasonable is as soon as possible with respect to the other matter. Attorney General, thanks for your time this evening. Thank you, Lee. Cheers. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.